Welcome back to another episode of the LKT Sports Talk. I'm here with Alex. How are you doing, Alex? Man, I am good. I could have been better, though. Could have been better. Yeah. So we had a bit of a, a bit of a two week break. You know, things have been going pretty uh, pretty hectic with Locker to- or Locker ecosystem, which is fine and dandy. But uh, yeah, so we've had to take a little bit of a break, but we're back now. And in that time, a lot's happened. Some things that aren't super great for Alex and I and a bunch of other Torontonians, but, um, you know, I mean, hey, it is what it is, but uh, we'll get to that. So today's uh, locker feature is necessarily a feature, but we're going to talk about our uh, Twitter accounts. So first one, we have the LKT Sports News and Picks. This is purely sports news, uh, spoiler alert, or fun fact. This guy runs it right here. So uh, first, uh, you know, we have all, it's all sports, right? Mainly hockey, but, you know, I cover everything else. I just want to kind of highlight this one here, which I posted on March 20th. You know, not a future foresight or anything, but obviously it was assumed he was going to Chicago but because they were so bad. But um, I guess while we're on this topic, you know, that'll be the, the first thing that we, we go into after this, but um, the Mr. Bedard. Uh, but yeah, no, so I, what I do is, you know, I'll post my picks, who I think is going to win, you know, for, I usually do one for the series. Um, for this one, I took Vegas over Dallas in six and Florida over Canes in seven. When we get to our thing, we know where my picks are going to be. So a little uh, for another four site right there. But yeah, no, I covered the Matthews contract, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. So check it out. Drop it links in bio. It's uh, at Sports LKT. Keep an eye out on that Twitter. We're going to be posting our uh, our um, pro- uh, content in there. So, on the topic of uh, my amazing foresight with Mr. Bedard here, um, yeah, guy got picked, or I don't know if he's been picked. We assume that he's been picked. Chicago got the first overall pick. It is very well assumed that he's going to be going to Chicago, or you know, obviously the guy is. The guys are looking like a generational talent, right? Now, the way I had it here is I, I like, you know, I did my little prediction of how many in 82 games, provided he doesn't get hurt, of course, um, his points. So I put 30 goals and 30 assists. Now, I really thought about it. And, Bonnie, this is before kind of Chicago really exploded their team. Right now, we all saw that coming for sure. But, I mean, you know, I don't know if he's going to do that now because unless you know how Chicago is too, they do love to go with the free agency. Everyone wants to go play in Chicago, this, that, blah, blah, blah. But if he, if if they have that team right now, I don't think he's going to come anywhere near 30 goals and 30 assists because he has no one to play with him. Right. You know, don't get me wrong. You know, I, I love those bottom six guys. But, you know, their top six guys are bottom six guys, unfortunately. Right. And, you know, no disrespect or anything. But, you know, like uh, Tyler Johnson is not a first round, a first line player. Right. Maybe. But on this team, he is. Is he a productive one? Not really. Alex, what do you think Mr. Bernard's going to do in his first year? Uh, no, nah, man, I think he has to stick to your conviction. I think Tyler Johnson's going to be the near 30 and 30 guy because he might be playing with Bedard. And yeah. Bedard is still going to be like 40 and 40, man. What did McDavid had? McDavid had near 100 points or over 100 points. No, he had his injuries first year. Yeah, but, yeah. Man, but he this, still still put up some crazy The goaltending yeah. is not like crazy out there, man. He's going to he's gonna put up the score. Now, is Chicago still going to finish like bottom five next year? I'd say there's a good chance of it. I'd say there's a good chance of it. But is he going to have, I'd say, 80 points, a point of game pace if he's healthy? Like, a point of game. I'd probably put him at a point of game right now. Yeah. I'd say that's probably the over-under. That's, and, I mean, I, I can see it happening for sure, but it, it just depends. Like, I, I can't see it. If they don't pick anybody up, realistically, who do they have, man? Tyler Johnson, you know, like um, Tyler, or Taylor Radish, whatever. He's a good player. Seth Jones is a good player, but, like, they got, they got some money. They got some money. They he might have, have Michael money. Bunting. He might have a Michael Bunting there. You true, know, true. I, it's still, we're no, we're not talking. We're not talking the elite of the elite. But you're not. You don't have to rebuild Roman today. You know what I mean? Give him yeah, the year. True. Give him a Tyler Johnson to play with. A guy that knows how to play the game. That's you know a vet. Right. He's gone to how many Stanley Cup finals with Tampa Bay? Right. That's. I don't. I don't think that kind of presence would necessarily be a bad one around him. And that's true. Sure, See what you can add to it, and I just think that skill, man. I'm I'm a I'm a Bedard believer. We're gonna we're gonna have jerseys. 
right? I, mm-hmm. I don't know if they're going to be the, the NHL official ones. The NHL's kind of let me down lately, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But, I mean, hey, we'll see. We'll see what it is. I mean, I'm stoked to have this guy in the league. Now, do I think he's going to be McDavid level that everyone thinks he is? No, personally. I think McDavid is just – he is – no one's. I, I think it's going to take another twenty years for someone to touch McDavid's skill. Personally, um, I mean, like, I I don't know. McDavid is like so hard to beat now. Bedard is like maybe close, but I mean, we'll have to see. Of course, right? The, for all we know, the kid could be a dud, right? You know, like, look, look how they said Lafreniere. Now, I don't, think, I don't think that's going to happen. But no. I mean, you never know, dude. No. <laughs> No, that's not going to happen. This It's going to be awesome, dude. That, so I didn't love that he landed in Chicago. I wanted him in the East just because I wanted to see him more, and I wanted my kids to be able to see him more with the time slots he plays at. Yeah. But landing in Chicago and landing in the Central there, like we're going to get to see Connor versus Connor every yep. year in the playoffs, basically. I and, and sorry, besides next year. I don't <laughs> think it's going to be next the playoffs. year. But yeah. I think 2024, 25, that's going to be a yeah. great matchup. I can see. I can totally see Chicago just completely bolster that lineup around. They have a lot of money to go around. They could totally do it too. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Watch them be a dud. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, so we'll get to the uh, we'll get to the playoffs. We have missed pretty much the entire second round essentially. Um, but don't worry, we got it covered. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was it was a little bit of a quicker first round as opposed to the first round. The the first round went. You know, there was. A lot of later games. There was really only one game seven, which is the one we're going to get to first. So Dallas and Seattle. I mean, hey, I like Seattle. I've said this before, right? I do love Dallas, of course, too. I think obviously, you know, the the the, the numbers don't lie. The better team did win, right? But I just think that it's you know not a bad thing for for Seattle. The fact that they you know lost out here, they made it to the second round and. Game seven, right? Like they played a hell of a damn series, right? And like Dallas is a, is a tough team to beat, right? Like, you know, leading into a question I'm going to ask you, Alex, Dallas has kind of always been that team that's been, you know, there, right? Or they're just on the cusp of being that powerhouse team. Do you think Dallas is now considered to be a powerhouse in the league? I think they have gotten there because, and it's funny because I'm, I'm going to say Jake Ottinger. Is is that sort of elite goaltending? But their scoring depth, I think, is a lot more thorough this year. Um, you know, like they added Marchman in, I think it was last year, but they added him and he's been playing great. Um, and and the other forwards that they've got, including Sagan, who's lighting it up a bit. Yep. You know, you need those guys playing big, big time hockey in big time moments, and they are. And it's funny that I think it went seven because Ottinger kind of was a bit leaky last mm-hmm, night, but mm-hmm. he's the reason I still have so much belief in that team. Like just to, I, they're they're going to be a, a real tough out here, man. You mm-hmm. know, yeah, they're going to be tough to beat. But next round we'll we'll see. So personally, I think Dallas is definitely a powerhouse now. They have every, almost every piece that they need, right? Like they have. The depth they have, the goaltending, the goaltending depth, right? Like they they have the superstars, right? Like they have everything you need to be a true elite team in this league. And I think they're going to keep building on this 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 roster that they have right now of great young players, great prime players, and great vets, right? Like I think these these guys are going to be the dangerous team from the West. Them and the team they're playing in the next round, which we'll get to, but uh, like. I, I really like them, but you know, my my next question, and I'm going to answer this one first, is where does Seattle go from here? Keep going, buddy. <laughs> Keep on trucking, right? They put up a hell of a fight in these playoffs, man. And everyone was doubting them from the beginning. Ah, uh, they're never going to beat Colorado, which is a fair assumption. But you know, like they're they're still a a great team. Like I I, I talk about these guys to the high heavens because I think that they're a solid, solidly built team. Now, where do they really go? What do they need? Maybe another goaltender. A solid, like, you know, Grubauer did his job. You know, Martin Jones did his job for most of the year. But they could look to get a, a, a bit more of a solidified goaltender. No disrespect to those two guys, but 
they might need someone that, you know, people aren't worried about, right? Someone like, obviously not like an Ottinger, but no one's worried about Ottinger in net. You know what I mean? Like the best teams have great goaltenders. And I think that's their number one piece that they need to get. You know, Matty Beneers is going to, I think he's going to end up being the leader of that team. Holy jumping. Do I love that kid? You know, he's, he's, you know, kind of Bo Horvat, you know, 2.0. So, so, you know, a little bit of bias, but you know, whatever, but I love that style of player, but I think that's their, their, their next move. Go target a goalie. They have so much depth that they can afford to trade a couple of them for something, maybe pick or two, whatever. I, I think that's their next goal. Alex, where do you think they go from here? I think I, I so I kind of like that idea, but I think if you're doing that, you got to be finding somebody that's taken Grubauer from you because I don't know which goal you're adding with Grubauer's 5.9 million for another four years. That's true. Yeah. Right. Like, so the cap situation is pretty decent. Like you said, they got some good depth. They've got about 15 million or so in cap space for the summer to work with. That's decent. They do need a goalie, but I don't know who's available on the market, man. And you're playing, paying Grubauer, sorry, 5.9 million for the next four years. Like I said, yeah. so if you can't find anything else, you still have that money. You can still deploy it. Well, and like you said, they still have some good depth. They got Shane, Wright Coming back in next year. You got to assume he's coming back into the lineup, right? I, mm -hmm. I think he's going to be, I think he's going to have a good summer, you know, for sure. I think he's going to have a good NHL like summer. Um, and, they are going to be a scary team in next year. This is a, a great run for them. They they pushed them to game seven. They they got a, a goal in the last minute or so, you know, to make it a little bit closer. But effectively, their scoring was held up in in that round or in that last game. And I think if you can find any extra scoring on the free agency market, or maybe in the trade upgrade market, maybe if there's a flashy forward available from some team. Maybe something makes sense. I don't know. The NHL could maybe be interesting for once. We'll see. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> I think they've, they've got the ability to make some moves, and they had a great year. That's a good spot to be in. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I love their, their season. I love their playoff run. <clears throat> Keep on trucking. I think they'll, they'll, they'll be good. So next series, we got Carolina and Jersey. I mean, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Carolina, I'm still – I, again, I, I said it before. I don't know why the hell I'm doubting this team. I don't know why. Um, they're good. <laughs> they're, they're they're good. Like clearly, they're they're not being brought down without you know Shreshnikov. They're still taking Jersey out in five, right? And Jersey is holy no slouch of a team, man. Like great, another great all around team with tons of star, but you know superstar flashiness. You know, in in Mr. Jack Hughes and my boy Luke Hughes. Luke Hughes is growing on me. Like I, I loved him from the beginning, but oh, he's a solid guy. Will he be better than than the other two? We'll have to see with my future crystal ball. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, like they're I, I that this they're in the same boat as Seattle for me. Keep on trucking, right? You ran into a hot team. Carolina is bumping. They are absolutely rolling. They're another. Super deep team with surprisingly good goaltending, you know, like considering that their track record and history of their you know injuries and whatever, whatever have you. But Carolina was was definitely the better team, and they're gonna they're gonna have a fun a fun run possibly to the final. So depending on how the next series goes against someone that we're not too happy with right now, but uh, <laughs> but I liked it. It was a fun series to watch. That's for sure. It was super fast paced. That was awesome to watch. So, uh, so what do you think of the series, man? This Carolina team has been, I mean, it's surprising me for sure, just because you, you see the injuries and you're like, how are they keeping up this scoring? And I think, you know, I don't think much of the sports world was quite giving their, their defense core quite the credit to deserve before the yep. playoffs. Mm -hmm. And they have really showed up, man. I mean, remember back to that Pittsburgh run, when when the tang was down and they had like Brian Duomelin playing like yeah. twenty seven minutes a night, but he was mm -hmm. sick all of a sudden. Like it's not quite that. Brent Burns is there. He's been great. Brent yeah. uh, Brady say I really like his play. Yep, Jacob Slavin too. But you know, and they're all stepping up. They're playing the playoff hockey. They're keeping a lot of shots to the outside, Absolutely. right? Yeah, we saw the Devils outburst for eight goals in the one game. But besides that, man, the other four that Carolina won, they they were kind of handled pretty well. And and that was a pretty high flying offensive team in in uh, mm -hmm. New Jersey, so I've been really impressed, impressed with the total team sort of defensive play, and they've got enough still goal scoring that they can they can get it done. And they're I mean doing it quickly, right? 
they they couldn't really afford to lose anybody else to injury. So good to be finishing up in five, have a couple rest days. Your opponent finished in five as well. So fair play, your sort of match play there. But, you know, you, that's what you wanted to do. Now you come out strong for round three and you're playing for a chance to go to the cup final. What more motivation do you need, right? You're you're right. halfway there. You're only halfway there, but mm-hmm. you win these four games and you're you're in the finals. <laughs> like it's looking know, a lot better you're after a that. Step right? away now, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, for me, like just just kind of circling back to the Devils, like I always look and it's like, well, you know, I I kind of ask myself, you know, if if I'm the, the Devils, who is my starter or even my tandem for in net next year? Because that seems to be kind of their biggest question, right? Right now, you know, they have Vancheck left at two years at three point four. Right, and then they have uh, Akira Schmidt's got one year left at eight fifty. I mean, guy played really damn well in the playoffs. They also still have Mackenzie Blackwood, who's an RFA right now. Right, Jonathan Bernier, he's a UFA, but he seems to be potentially done LTIR for sure. So that's a whole other thing. But between those three, like, who is your starter? Who's even your backup? Right. In my opinion, what I would do because this team can kind of be in that boat of a big air quotes here, unproven goaltender of Akira Schmid. Personally, I would look to trade Vancheck for pieces that you need to really help out this team, in particular offense. If you look at Jersey's prospect pool, especially on defense, but they're looking nice. So I don't think they really, they, you know, Dougie's that, that kind of guy that can, you know, be the, the the rock, I guess, if you will. And then I think Luke Hughes is going to end up being one of the best defensemen in the NHL eventually. Yeah, I, I I have my biases, but you know, I love that he's a look at him, man. He's a killer player, dude. He's so good. You know, something's in the something's in the milk at the at the Hughes household. I don't know what's going on, but you know, whatever. But um, you know, I think if they can get, because the big question is, you know, what are you going to do with Timo Meyer, right? Are you going to resign him? Where is that money coming from, right? Maybe they can I, – I don't like using the term cap dump because it seems like such a negative thing. You know, are you going to cap dump that 3.4 for Vancheck to kind of make some more space, right? But, like, you know, because realistically, Timo can sign for eight and a half, nine million if he really wanted to, right? Probably more if he is a good enough agent. But, you know, like, like whatever. It, it seems like, you know, maybe he wants to win or whatever. Again, I don't know the guy, but I think they can – if they can look to get – Another star, 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 right? Trade a couple pieces, maybe Van check a pick and a couple prospects. Get a star, star to play with Jack Hughes, right? Again, no disrespect to you know guys like Jasper Pratt and you know even Timo Meyer, but like Jack Hughes needs another star to play with, right? I don't want to make the Leaf comparison, but you know Matthews and Mark, Trisaddle and and uh, McDavid, Hints and Robertson, right? Like you need another guy with you, right? If they want to use that money to get Timo and then, you know, or to keep Timo and to have you know, Hughes and Timo, all the power, right? Jasper Bratt is a solid guy, right? But maybe they could even look to move in, but they just need a little bit more impact players, right? Again, I keep saying it, but I, I really mean it. I'm not taking away from their cast right now, but impact players that can – Turn the series when you're down against Carolina like that, right? That's what I think they need personally. I think, you know, maybe Blackwood can, they can trade his rights or something to maybe someone like Seattle. Who knows? That could be a good guy to get, you know, something like that. A little bit of a younger-ish goalie that can kind of really, you know, get her going. But I, I don't know. Like, Alex, who, who, what would you do there? Who is your, who would be your starter? So I love Akira Schmid. I think he's absolutely fine as a 1B, though. Um, like, for now, right? And I think what you do for this season is I'm not as rushed to trade away Vanacek because, man, he had, a, he had a really good regular season. He did. Like, the team, the team was a great team this year, and I don't think that that's much of a – like, that cost is about just under 4 million – or 4.4 million bucks to run a Kirschmied and, and Vanacek for this season. And, I mean, you can kind of just look at it right there that, okay, I mean, you want to find a backup to that or, you know, an AHL goalie that can be called up if needed. But I think you're kind of fine enough there. And and the reason I say that is, again, the market just doesn't seem good for goalies being available. I don't know that it's worth it to trade the assets needed to go after Connor Hallibuck unless you can deploy 
their cap space effectively enough that he is the kind of like that missing piece if he's available or not. But they've got 30 million in cap space. They've got almost, you know, half their team is up for contract. So they've got a ton of guys that need to be re-signed. And Miles Wood needs a contract. Jesper Bratt, like you said, Timo Meyer, right? A bunch of these guys need contracts, but their decor, I think it's almost set, man. They've got five guys signed to term, right? Siegenthaler's on a six year deal. They got Hamilton. Graves is the one for me that I would love to re-sign him. Yeah. Because I don't want to beast. And I don't want to lose right and asset management. You don't want to lose that for nothing. But I also do like their defensive prospects coming, right? Simon Nemich, I hope to see in the NHL next year. If not, I mean he's got to be in the NHL the year after. So if you can get Greaves back on a shorter term deal, call it two, three years, and and you pay him, you know, give him a, a bit of a raise. I think he was making five point one. Maybe he's a six million dollar defenseman, but I don't think he's seven. Right? He's great, but we're talking. We're already talking five, six million bucks. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm not. I I don't want to Darnell nurse him and suddenly pay him eight and a half million, and yeah. then next year be like, really? We paid eight. And we're paying eight and a half for this. Yeah. You know. So I think he's going to get a relatively good contract. I think that you keep him and you look to maybe flip him next year once you do bring Nemec into like a full-time role because I think that that's just much better asset management. I've heard lots of things with Timo Meyer from long-range deal to they might do a one-year deal on his um, uh, his arbitration number or whatever. They can re-sign him for an automatic like $8.5 million one-year deal or something um, I was hearing it on the 32 Thoughts podcast there. Great show there, Merrick and uh, Friedman. Very, <laughs> very informational. But yeah, you can you can sign him for like 15% less than his qualifying offer to an automatic one-year deal. And I don't hate that because it really gives you a lot of flexibility. It lets you bring him back at a number that's not crazy. 8.5 is not crazy, right? That's It's not nothing, but you've got 30 million in space right now. So you can fit that, that in. Mm-hmm. You hope he has a much better season than he than he sort of had once he came to you. And if you guys aren't in it complete, like come trade deadline, that's a heck of a trade chip to now put back out on the market and recoup the assets you sent back out, right? When looking at trading for players or trading away players, it's not necessarily just like a that's the end of the move, right? I, I love the trade trees. I've seen Dangles trade trees on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And and this is a piece of the trade tree, right? You either re-sign him long-term and you move him into kind of this locked-in kind of spot, or maybe you look at this short-term deal if he doesn't want to go long-term right now. Because maybe he does mid-season. Maybe, you know, you run it back and you're having a great season. You win 15 in a row again, right? Like, if they bring back a lot of the same players and spend their capital on I don't know quite what more they needed, man. I think they just really need some more experience, right? Jack Hughes is, is pretty young. Nico he's here is still pretty young. Yep. Luke Hughes just played his first couple games, and you're talking about him being maybe a best of the league defense. Like, <laughs> eventually, <laughs> eventually, we'll get there. Right, but but <laughs> once he gets to that kind of experience level that he might be in a year, two, three times, like they are going to be a force. They just they need some patience, right? Yep. They need to just keep trucking, kind of like you're saying, and mm-hmm. and see what you can do. Add around the edges, you know, try and be f- effective with your your spending and. Like I always say, it's asset management. Don't let guys walk for nothing if you if you can do anything about it. Absolutely, yeah. No, I 100% agree. That's that's exactly what it is. And I mean, I, I, I'm I'm excited to see what what Jersey can do next year, and I'm excited to see where Carolina is going to end up if they end up with a, a cup in their hand. So one way or another, I think they will. But let's get to uh, get to the tough one. <laughs> let's just. Tear the bandaid off. Uh, the the Panthers beat the Leafs four to one. I'm going to start this with a, a quick question. When it comes to Florida, are they just hot, or are they actually this solid team? Personally, I think it's both. Right, I think they're still a very good team. Right, they play an aggressive game crazy for checking man like any any paul maurice coach team is gonna be relatively good right he, the guy's a, a fucking a, a genius <laughs> but I, I i think they're still like they're reeling off of that that boston win still i that's got to be it right like and they had the leaf they didn't have the leafs number i wouldn't say but they were more aggressive and it really seemed like 
you know, they just they wanted it more, right? Like they they're still a very 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 good team. Maybe some nonsense aside, but still, it's the way way the cookie crumbles. But I think it's still both. Yes, they're hot from from you know reeling off that that Boston win, beating the best team of all time or best regular season team of all time. But they you got to look at that team. They're still a damn good team. They're well put together with excellent goaltending from from Bobrovsky for the whole series, realistically, right? But I think it's still both. Alex, what do you think? So in comparing what, well, I guess I'll just answer your question. Yes and no, right? It's yes, they are hot and they're playing the right type of hockey. They're playing the type of hockey that they can get away with and play to their strengths, right? They're playing that playoff type, grind type, get in your face, you know, get away with things type hockey. Yeah. And (laughs) man, it's effective. And they've got sort of these good skill leader in that group. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I started just sort of thinking about it where the Leafs play like don't give the puck away hockey. They play possession hockey. The Panthers play get the puck back hockey. Exactly. You know, and that's that's a huge difference come playoff time, having that aggressiveness to be on the forecheck. Right. I think um, maybe it was Brandon Montour was watching one of the intermission interviews. And of course, there's a Panthers one because they were doing well and getting interviewed. Mm-hmm. But they were talking about that. They, you know, a mentality in the room is is win the next puck battle. Yeah. Whatever happened there, I don't care. Nobody cares. Win the next one, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. On to the next one. You missed that one. That's fine. You, has, you were trying your best. We all know like that's that's a full team mentality, and and that's a tough mentality to beat come playoff time, right? You add just enough skill, and you add just enough of you know Vesna candidate level Bobrovsky yeah. on the case, and that's that's what that guy is. He's either best in the league or worst in the league. And yeah, right. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> it's a great time of the year to be best in the league, man. Mm-hmm. And, you know. What, do you, what else do you want in the playoff besides a little bit of skill, a little bit of grit, and a hot goalie? Yeah. And that's that, where that, and you're round three. <laughs> and, that, and that mentality idea, you know, leads into my, my next point when it comes to the Leafs. When you have that coaching, that system of your game, it makes all the difference. So – Everybody and their mother is asking in the sports world right now. It's the number one hot topic, realistically. What do the Leafs do? Do they blow up the team? Who from the core four are they getting rid of? This, that, blah, blah. Classic, you know, Leaf uh, Toronto media stuff. I have four points. And surprisingly enough, it doesn't really have to do with the core four. (laughs) So, number one, tying it into that mentality i think this thing all starts with getting rid of keith right say what you want about keith you know i gotta or not in the locker room we don't know what he's like but it just seems like he doesn't have the locker room he doesn't have the team he makes some questionable coaching decisions mid game and this and that and i think it's got to start with him man like 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 Matthews and Marner, Tavares, Nylander, even Riley, like in this series, you know, the Tampa, or the, the Tampa series, they played incredibly well. The Florida series, not so much. Now, they got shut down a bit for sure, right? But that's no excuse. You got to make coaching changes. It's not just throw your damn third line out there and hope that they do the best. It's not how it works. So this is the, the big thing when it comes to moving people around. I think that needs to be done. As tough as this is going to be to see him go, Willie's got to get traded for a true, and no disrespect to Riley, true number one defenseman. Someone, you know, obviously this is a, a far threat shot, but someone like, you know, a Moritz Sider, right? Or like, you know, an Adam Fox, right? Like a true number one defenseman. I love Riley, but he's got the Siakam effect. He's not an elite number one. He's an elite number two. And that's great to have. That is excellent to have on a team. And elite number two is so important. And Riley is a – he could be the, the the number one, number two defenseman in the NHL, right? And that's good, right? But I think the Leafs really lack an impact defender right now, right? Like, like Riley can do his job. You know, don't get me wrong. I love the Leafs' decor. You know, I was so happy when they got Shen. I was super happy when they got McCabe. You know, but, like, these guys aren't – impact players when it comes to producing offense in today's nhl 
you need guys that can do both, right? If you're going to have guys like Shen and and McCabe and Giordano, even Giordano produces some offense here and there, but if you're going to have true defensive defensemen, you need to have the offensive producers on defense to get it done, right? The reason why I'm saying this so heavily is because in this whole series, how many defensive zone turnovers were there, right? Yes, you can credit it to the fact that, that Florida is such a great forechecking team, but still, you got to be able to move that puck out of the damn zone without turning it over, right? And I, I love Shen. I, like he's one of my favorites. I love McCabe. I he I fell in love with the damn guy with you know, over the past couple of seasons. But they're not those guys. They can't. That's not their game, right? Like Riley, that's his game, but he's not the number one, right? So I think Willie's got to get moved be, mainly because Willie his contract's coming up, and that's going to be a, a big ticket. So I, I think he's you know. A good amount of money coming from him. So I, I, I don't know. I, I think the next thing, though, when it comes to goaltending is just no disrespect. I was very hopeful when he came in. Do whatever you have to do to dump Murray's contract. Stick him on LTIR if you need to. Sorry, Matt, but this is what it is. Take that money, put it to Sam Smith. Get that man signed. Run Joseph Wool as backup. Joseph Wool played so well when he needed to. The kid's positioning is incredible. He is cool as a freaking cucumber when he's in net. Does his not antsy, jittery, nothing. He is solid. And he does his freaking job and plays his position properly. Sam Samov, Hull, or sorry, Wool, sorry, not Hull. Hull, I don't think we need to talk about. There's a door, bud. Don't want to hit you on the ass on the way out. But, uh, you know, <laughs> but those are the two. The, the two goalies that they should be running without a question. And then last, just pray to anything that O'Reilly wants to sign a very team-friendly deal, right? <laughs> the guy's made a good amount of money. Maybe, hopefully, he wants to stay in Toronto on a nice deal. Awesome. Get Shen back. Get Achari back. Let every other UFA walk. You got to do something here because, you know, I, a lot of people like to think that the window for the Leafs is a lot bigger. It's not, right? You got everybody expiring. You got to make something happen, right? That's kind of true, yes and no. You can bring these guys back. But, I mean, you got to do something. It's got to come down to it, right? But at the end of the day, they could run this exact same team back and I would be perfectly fine with it as long as there's a different coach, right? Bring someone in like Boudreaux. Buddy, get Sutter in for God's sake. Like someone to get these guys going when they need to get going, right? They're ridiculous during the regular season. And in that first round, they were great. They were amazing. The whole team played great. But when, it's, when it comes to time of importance, in particular, elimination games. You got to get it done, right? And I think a lot of that, the majority of it, comes down to coaching. So that's my super long-winded, passionate uh, rant on what needs to happen. Alex, what do you think needs to happen? Yeah, it was a tough one, man. Um, definitely the coaching. Definitely, I think most Leafs fans are kind of just, we've seen them get out coached. I have six times in the playoffs and it's kind of, you know, that's the one that I don't want to run back. I agree. That's the one that you definitely, you know what? It's the easiest to change, right? The least amount of difficult conversations I think have to happen with that one. But I also kind of agree with trading somebody in the big four and yeah. it's more of the big three because you're not trading John. And I don't think you'd, so his cap hits a little tough. I wish he could trade. Like, can I trade you twenty five percent of John's <laughs> cap hit, and and we're just gonna keep him so? But you just you yeah, pay part yeah, of yeah. it, right? Arizona, here's your draft pick. <laughs> pay part of the contract. Yeah. But besides doing that, I think you know he's the type of guy that will sign a couple million dollar deal like a Patrice Bergeron after his current deal's over. So exactly, exactly. you think him, and he's he's still pretty good. I think you put it on the table to the the three of them. Like it's not to make this a competition guys, but who wants to sign the extension 
and who wants to make the money, right? Because mm -hmm. we got to probably trade one of you, and we're just going to sort of put an open call out to, hey, the rest of the league, you let us know which one you might be interested in and how much you want to pay. Because that's where, man, the window to me, the window's not closing because there's been good asset management. This is why I've been preaching Kyle Dubas was the biggest off-season signing for the Maple Leafs coming 100%, up. 100%, dude. Dubas, I, that's, that's the one thing real quick. When people are saying that Dubas needs to go, Dubas does not need to go. Look at the stuff he's done with the cap. This team is still very good on paper. It's just maybe the coaching didn't get it done, right? But, like, that's my two cents on Dubas. He is not the problem on this team by any stretch of the means. No. To me, this year, this team, not just on paper, this team was the most thoroughly built team that we've ever seen as Leafs fans, minus playoff experience for goaltending. And sure. I don't think that that was the issue. Even nope. like I felt comfortable with Joseph Wall in that, and those were his first playoff games. He yep. played our game, you know, potential getting swept game was his first playoff start. And he and, was solid. And, and were you comfortable as a Leafs fan going into it? Like, yeah, let's go, Joseph. Let's mm -hmm. see what you got, bro. I, I trust you. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Right. And and that's where for me, yeah, I'm super comfortable with him and Sam Smith next year if we can get him back. Sam Smith said he wanted to resign. Now, here's where I want a bit of a different mentality than the NHL is kind of used to. They're kind of like, you know, a Jack Campbell type. Let's lock him up five years. I think you offer Sam Smov like a two year, like seven million bucks, three and a half million, mm -hmm. right? This will take him to UFA at 27, right? For him to be set up to maybe sign that six year deal with anybody he wants to, or hey, yep. maybe he'll hear if you've, if we've done the thing, maybe you want to stick around. <laughs> Whatever. That, that allows flexibility to both sides. I like the Leafs goaltending depth throughout their system. And, I like what they are just, you know, they're spending in development, man. This is a team that does spend basically, it seems like, as much as possible on full full round, you know, organizational development. So mm -hmm. I like their ability to keep bringing in future talents like a Joseph Wool, bring them up to the ranks, train them, get them good, and get them into action and get them exactly. into action cheaply, right? We're looking at Joseph Wool, who we all felt comfortable with in the playoffs, and he's going to make under a million bucks for the next two years. Mm -hmm. That's some great value, right? That's some great value to have. And that's where, man, Marner, Matthews, which one of you, you know, which one of you, which one of you is it going to be? And I think it kind of goes to Matthews first because he has the ability to sign the extension right now. Yeah. And I think Marner being a two year kind of player already could be a more valuable asset for another team where you look at Nylander's only signed for one more year. Both of them are UFA at the end of it, right? So if you're looking at trading one of the two, yes, Marner comes with that near $11 million cap hit. But you do get two years of him for sure, right? If you're trading him to a Columbus, right? They've had interest in the past. I don't, I don't love Columbus because I don't love a lot of the pieces. Coming. I don't know what's coming back that I'm excited about, right? Okay. I like uh, Philadelphia because there's some players I like there. You bring a Scott Lawton back. I like what he could do on that third line. You bring a <laughs> maybe is is what's Kunek me doing, right? I maybe just I gotta I, for a year I, and he's a solid second line winger. I right? gotta jump in here. Go I think it would be a freaking disaster, and a unless. The return was tremendous if they moved Marner. I think it's just such a bad idea, right? Like, it's not he kills, he kills penalty kills, man. Like, well, he's, he's, he's man. Like, oh, but you can you can have different players do that. Yes, I get that for sure. But I mean, like, okay, does it really mean much? Kind of, not really. But the guy is a Selkie nomination, man. Like, he was a finalist for the Selkie. That 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 means something, right? And look at his. Sure, okay, none of the of the the core four did much in the, the Florida series, but man, look at him in the first round. He was incredible, right? I think that Matthews and Marner are the, you can look to trade Tavares if you really want to. Now, would I know? Because I think he's going to sign a nice deal, exactly yes, kind of like a Bergeron, right? It's something like a bit of a Bergeron deal, but I think these are your two guys that you build your team around, right? Like it's not down to them entirely. Right, there is still a whole other damn team, and not to mention some faulty ish coaching. Right, like you know, there it's a team effort. Like these two guys do their job. Now, when the the push comes to shove, sometimes they falter a little bit. But I don't think that's a reason to ship them off to the freaking moon, right? Like, or you know, to wherever, right? Like, th that's that's the, no, the that's Chicago. Cool. But, it's, but then, <laughs> different. The difference is, it's not that that's just the one reason. So for me, there's a couple reasons to possibly do it. It's because I think that there could be some benefit to having a relatively serious shakeup besides just the possible cap dispersal throughout the roster a bit better, right? You might not need to have a Zach Aston Reese in the third or fourth line. You might be able to have a bit of an upgrade there. But 
what I think it is like you've seen these guys kind of put themselves first in the past too, right? Marner missed a day of camp, man. What the hell is that about? Yeah. Right, Matthew, and that's where I say Matthews kind of has the tips on his in his court right now. He said in his press conference he'd like to have a deal done before the season. I yeah. think that needs a deal done by July first because again, that's when his no. I think he's got a no move that kicks in for the final season on July first, and you don't let him have that leverage if you're the team. You need a decision, a commitment. We're either signing a deal on July one, maybe it's this deal right here. That's right there, buddy. That's, that's a deal. I, that's a bit too much, man. That's it. Feels like it's a bit too much for. So we've seen a really good consistency of a baseline of scoring, but man, he has like what he hasn't cracked 50 more than the one time. Right. With the cap going up though, I think that kind of makes a bit more sense. Though. They got us already with that though. They got us already with that, with us True. paying more because the cap was going up and sorry, dude, you're telling me that there's not a chance that there's another global pandemic in the next five years. That's who, fair. Who, how, how do we, how do we look at each other and say that at this point? Right. Mm -hmm. We don't, I, sorry, I don't. And, yeah. and not that I'm a conspiracy theorist, not, but it's man, it happened. We've seen, we saw it shut mm -hmm. down in a week's time yeah. from some somebody getting sick. It seemed in in you know, the mainstream sports, and and suddenly the NHL, the NBA is all canceled. Again, I don't think that'll happen, but you can't get held over the barrel on these. Well, it might. True, and I hope it does. But we got to work with it right now, and we're willing to. I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're going to hold out on him. I think they'd still be offering him 12 and a half, probably make him the highest played player in the league at time of signing the contract. But I'm hoping that he doesn't max it out like that. I'm hoping mm -hmm. that he looks at it and goes, man, I can make 12 and a half instead of 14 and a half, leave a couple million on the table there. He doesn't have to do many ads to make that money back. He can do whatever he wants. Sure. Right? Yeah. I'm, I, I don't want to trade him or Marner, but I think you get a hell of a return for either of them. Well, and of course, yeah. You have to you have to be sensible of things, right? You have to get this commitment. You have to get this buy-in from these guys to want to be here, to want to win, right? And if they do, great. Let's go. We'll figure it out. I, I'm down to run the big four back. I think you can do it financially and have a great team. Look what they had this year. I don't know if you can bring Ryan O'Reilly back if you don't trade one of those guys. And that's yeah. where it's like, man, look at it this way. You trade Marner. You trade math. He's one of the two. You get all the. You get a bunch of pieces. You maybe get five million bucks in cap back in players. Maybe it's a Konechny, but now you also sign Ryan O'Reilly, right? Like maybe it's again, yeah. it's asset management. You're looking at one single player on the team. Marner is great. He does it all, but he he doesn't necessarily have to. That's why you got third and fourth lines. That's why you got, you know, you're talking about the new NHL type player where they kind of do everything, right? Could Matthew and Ice kill penalties in two years? Maybe yeah. I don't know. The kid looks yeah. like he plays a pretty tough, aggressive game. That's what Marner's playing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I want to throw that kid right away into that role, but I'm saying that these players are getting better. Their skills are getting more thorough. They're getting more adaptable, and they're getting more skilled. And I don't think you have to be married to single players when you can get these amazing returns. What you can't do is let them walk for nothing, right? Yeah, of course. I'm yeah, in favor, that's... man. If you could get a number one D, definitely that should be your target. But who's giving that up? Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe at Vegas, they've kind of got a couple. If they're man, if Shea Theodore is on the table, I, right? Like, you know what I mean? I, I think that does help slot guys better. It does help Riley maybe play a bit more of a game that he's a bit more comfortable in that is a bit yeah. more offensive. And he's locked in, man. It, if you're not trading him, he's got a big ticket at seven five for the next seven years. Still, eight years. is it? Yep. Is, oh, eight is it kicking in this year? I think it's already yeah. kicking. Kicks in this year, yeah. But right this, you, this coming year. You've got a lot of skill. And I just I hope that we have a GM that's an asset management talent yeah. management basis, right? And Eric Pelsky, uh, Brandon Pridham, promote him if Dubis mm -hmm. isn't coming back. But if Dubis wants to come back, you put the check in front of him and you say how many years you want to come back for and what's the number. You mm -hmm. let him fill those in and you say, Great, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Like my last little point at the end of the day though. I don't think that this is a negative thing. You know, it is realistically a step in the right direction, right? Made it to the second round. Okay, maybe only won one game, but still made it to the second round, beat a very, very good Tampa team, and ran into a white hot Florida team, right? They are the sun right now. They are just that freaking hot. So I, I just think that, you know, maybe some big changes if you need. Definitely a coaching change, in my opinion, but it's still a step in the right direction, man. They're 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 getting better, you know. It's I'm hopeful. So let's move over to the last series, and 
a team that uh, is kind of in the same disappointment level as as Toronto. Vegas beat Edmonton four, uh, four to two. I'm not surprised personally. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Vegas is winning the cup, from in my opinion. Um, these guys are looking impossible to beat right now in a seven-game series at least. Edmonton is obviously killer, right? They're a, a fantastic team. McDavid, Leon, you know, Hyman, they all played really well. Was it goaltending? Maybe. I think it came down to Vegas just being a crazy good team. Like, crazy good. So the big question is, you know, everyone – I, I go off of social media world, so maybe is it viable or not? Who knows? But um, is this a failure season for Edmonton? I don't think so. I think it's still optimistic for their future because of one reason. Nuge stepped up. Evander stepped up when he was playing. Hyman stepped up. Bouchard stepped up. These guys are stepping up. It's not just McDavid and Dreisaitl anymore. Skinner kind of stepped up. Campbell maybe stepped down, but whatever. As long as one of them steps up. I'm not calling these guys failures of the season. They played an incredibly good team. Two incredibly good teams. Right? Like, like the Kings are no damn slouch of a team either. You know, like like I think this is still a, a a trend in the right direction. Same as Toronto, but more so for them, right? Because their depth stepped up, and that's been their problem. It's the McDavid and Drysaddle show. Now it still is, but they stepped up. Alex, what do you think? So, yeah, no. For me, the, se- the season's not a failure. I'll just jump on that part quickly because to, I guess it's all in how you measure success, right? If you're a cup or bust type, well, I guess it's failure. I'm not. I'm a, a, can you put out an enjoyable product? Do you, you know, do you have a reasonable chance at success? And they definitely did, right? They proved that by going to game six in the second round. I think a failure type season for them would be missing the playoffs or a complete, like a sweep in the playoffs, like just a a falling flat after getting in, right? But, you know, Boston, Boston didn't have a failure of a season, even though they did lose in seven to Florida to me. They had a great season and they had a tough playoff round against it team that played some damn good hockey and is now going on a run from it you know good Mm -hmm. for them that's that it just shows how close nhl is in terms of you know the level of skill throughout the teams and how close they make it with the officiating now with edmonton i think they absolutely can just build off this season they have a bunch of the pieces still signed anyways right they don't have a ton of cap space to really do much more as is but you know, you, you get out there with some effective scouting, some effective pro scouting. You see what's on the free agent market. You add a couple pieces around the edges. I think, you know, you might be able to to switch some guys out. Evan Bouchard's going to be playing a bit more of a prominent role next year. Absolutely. Uh, the goaltending, I don't think he can really do much with that Campbell contract with how he played this year. I don't think anybody's going to touch it. So you run it back next year, right? You give him a chance of redemption, and the second he gets hot, if anybody wants him, right, you ship his ass out because I think Stuart Skinner can run with it. Yeah. So... I think I think what you saw this year in total, yeah, in the second round, yeah, he played a little poorly at times, but I don't think that that those couple games is suddenly now that's what he is. No, he showed you seventy sort of games or not seventy in the season, but I think that's what he's got in his career now of sort of what kind of goal he is, and I think you're feeling pretty comfortable about it now. I'd probably make sure I'm drafting one every year if I'm them right now to be having some more, <laughs> you know, have some more in the pipeline coming. But you build off it. And, man, Vegas played some, like you said, they're a deep team. They're a thorough team. They're, I love their defense. I, I keep going on about Shea Theodore, and it's crazy that he's not at least the highest paid, but he's not really the best defenseman on that team even. Right. Right. Alex, yeah. Alex Petra, chop your arm off. Angelo is the top paid Paul defenseman. Bunyan. Oh, Paul my Bunyan. God. What a sad dude. And that was that's, that's the NHL for you, though, right? That's up oh, one game. All right. You know, uh, and you know, good for Dry Saddle, barely shaking his hand, you know, looking him off because that was that was some bull. That was some bull, man. But was. He's a I, was, I was blown so. away, blown away by that because he's not that type of player, man. I think it's just, you know, tempers flared. And I was like, what the hell was that, man? Like, freaking two hand, freaking Dasan chop, man. Like, <laughs> what it is, man, is it's it's a further indictment on where the NHL is as a league in terms of officiating and player safety. And it's, That's fair. 
I mean, the the highlight reel from this playoffs alone is laughable, and it's 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 just disappointing as a fan. Um, that is that is very true. They 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 realistically kind of have dropped the ball. He knows bit, he knows but. that he's not going to get a serious consequence from that, and he didn't. Even getting the one game, especially with Darnell Nurse getting the automatic one game, made it feel like it was not a serious consequence at all. It's like, oh, they both lost a defenseman for a game, and now they both come back, right? That that to me, that should have been like the cadre suspension from a year back or a couple of years back, where it's you're suspended for the series, dude. If this yeah. goes to six or seven, you're suspended for that. You can come back next series, but that was fucked up, and you're out of here. Yeah, that was right? blatant, dude. That was absolutely like, blatant, man. That's assault. That is not hockey. <laughs> that wasn't follow through. That was I'm gonna chop this dude's arm off. That was assault. Yeah, that really and you was. Do that. Yeah, you do that. That and was crazy. The player should know that they can't do that. And it's mm-hmm. I I hope I hope we start seeing some better. I hope we. I mean, you know, Sheldon Keith's got to go. They got to clean house of player safety. Uh, make it a DAO, and we have a hundred people that vote on it. Like mm-hmm. you know, you get you. I don't know. You get fans from every single team. You get a 500 person panel and they like all submit a vote on each play because I think as a consensus, as a hockey community, we can all look at things and go, that's crazy. At least five yeah. games or something. Right. <laughs> yeah. and, and everyone's kind of like, yeah, that feels right. You, you know? tried to kill him. I think that might be a little bit more than one game. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. Let's call the police. <laughs> Let's call the police first. I want a police report file from that, from that event. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I'd like to be on that panel, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, so I, I still think it's this was a, a very good season for Edmonton, but I said it, and they're going to be my pick when we get to our little next series because uh, for our call your shot for this uh, round, I got the first pick, and I'm going to jump in right away, taking Vegas. Vegas is, uh, I think – the shoe in. I don't want to, you know, play favorites or anything, but the way they look, I think these guys are shoe in to win the cup right now. They have been playing so, so well. I don't think anyone's going to be able to beat them. Watch me get my words. I do love Dallas, you know, but Vegas is so, so good. So I'm taking, uh, I'm taking Vegas for our, uh, our call your shot for the conference finals. You know what I was just thinking back to, man? Thinking back to all those episodes where I was calling the West mid, this and that. that the, <laughs> right? West, the West doesn't look strong. And, man, what we also said, though, is they didn't look strong except for, like, two or three teams. And these are two of them. So, you know what? You take Vegas. Obviously, I think that's a solid pick. They're a great team. Mm-hmm. I still like Dallas, man. If Jake Ottinger can can put it together, I don't think that they're going to be an easy out by any means. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, of Carolina, Florida, man – it really it's, tough uh, more, it, it's tough and it just i feel like no matter which one it is they're going to get walked in the finals by whoever comes out of the west now which is mm-hmm. again just funny enough thinking back to you know a month or two ago mm-hmm. i'm going to take carolina though i think okay. that they're going to sort of keep their run going that they have figured out enough of the offense and that was all that i was really worried about uh, the goaltending a little bit being a Leafs fan i, I Trusting Freddie Anderson in the playoffs, like that dude was the reason we lost at least one of those game sevens, if not two of them. So <laughs> having faith in him was a little tough for me personally because I've, I've been hurt before by him, but he's come <laughs> back in and he's played well. And yeah, that, he has. that defense he has. Is, is playing real well in front of him. So I don't love Florida's necessarily ability to get their offense through unless they're driving the net holding sticks like uh, players might do. But mm-hmm. I'm uh I'm gonna I'm gonna be pretty comfortable with Carolina and I think I might have a chance at the two oh here, bro. I don't know. I'm kinda of feeling <laughs> good about that combo. You know, be honest, I was thinking the other way around. I think I'm gonna take this one. No, no. man, no. Somebody's, somebody's gonna, gonna give. Yes. Somebody's <laughs> gotta give because as you can see, our second round matchup, we tie it again. I don't have it on here because I deleted it. I don't want to type it again. But uh, I think what did we tie three three or something for the first round, and then we tie two two for this round. So again, hey. Great minds think alike, but what are we gonna do? So, but I think this one, I think I'm gonna take this. It's, one. Uh, <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm reverse calling it now that it's gonna be Florida and Dallas that win because we're just both gonna be wrong, but we're also both gonna finish one one. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that might be might be the case. That is so but I mean, even if we tie in this one. Something's got to give in the final, but that's the fun part of a coffee shop. But anyways, okay, so this has been uh, another episode of the LKT Sports Show. Thank you all for listening. Everything is in the bio, links to the you know our website, uh, Twitter page that we just showed today. Keep an eye on there. Drop a like, retweet, 
have a whole fun stuff. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Great time. We'll catch you in the next episode.